Hello everyone. Have you ever wondered why people speak so much about automatic control? Well, firstly, control is present in most engineering fields across robotics, transportation engineering, and system engineering. Secondly, it can be found more generally in every process of conception from science to art, and we'll use this to help introduce these concepts. But first of all, what is automatic control? Let's start with an example. This is Leonardo. Say hello there. Suppose Leonardo wants to paint a heart. To do so, he needs three elements. First, he needs a brush. Second, he needs to see what he'll be painting. And last but not least, he'll obviously need his brain. Automatic control describes this entire process in a more abstract way. In this video, we'll focus on three key elements, which are called the actuator, the controller, and the sensor. The actuator is what performs the action. In our example, it will be Leonardo's brush. The controller manages information it receives and offers a strategy to control the actuator. Its purpose is to achieve the mission it has been designed for. In our mission, this is Leonardo's brain. The sensor collects information from its environment and transmits it to the controller. In this context, it's Leonardo's eyes. The combination of these three elements together with the system, represented as a block diagram, defines the controlled system we're working on. In our case, the system is Leonardo's mission to paint a heart. The target result is a painting of a heart. In our example, one can isolate the three basic items from Leonardo, his brush, his brain, and his eyes. Each of these elements are equally necessary to perform the objective. Let's carry out a quick experiment with Leonardo. The choice of the proper actuator is essential to fulfill the mission. Suppose the actuator is missing or faulty. If Leonardo uses a broom instead of a brush, his heart is gonna look like that. The design of the controller is crucial to properly manage the information received from the sensors and to control the actuator in the right way. Suppose his brain capacities are put to zero. This means the controller is down. Now, try and draw a heart there. No, not that way. Perfect. I'll give you back your brain capacities. You've earned it. Finally, having a sensor is of the utmost importance to retrieve information from the system's environment. This is why Leonardo needs his eyes to paint. Thank you, Leonardo. Now go. I've heard a certain Mona Lisa is waiting for you to portray her. That's it. You've now understood the basics of automatic control. All of that was cool, but what is automatic control used for in real life? Well, maybe you've seen some of these magical seeming videos of shows with drones lighting up the night sky, which seems to be ever so common on social media. The principle behind these is actually extremely simple and relies on the synchronization of several drones. Each drone has to position itself at a specific location in the sky and emits a range of different lights, much like a pixel. But what does that have to do with automatic control? To better understand, we'll focus on one single drone. Let's go back to Leonardo on our block diagram. The system is now a drone, but what about the actuator, the controller, the sensor? First, the actuator is the motor that drives the propellers, allowing the drone to fly to its right location. A quadrotor drone has four motors. Second, the controller is a microprocessor usually located within the drone. It has the same role as the brain since it runs an algorithm controlling the actuators. Finally, there are several location sensors on our drone. Generally, there are only accelerometers, but we can also find cameras or other guidance devices. With their help, the drone knows if it's at the right place or not, if there's wind or not, and so on. 